Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 18. Remember you not the former things. Forget what you know. God's got something great. Come on. <laughs> Forget what you know. Forget the former things. Uh, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. God is about to do some new things. I, I, I don't... I, <laughs> I'm talking about some creative things. I'm, I'm talking about some things that have never been done before. Well, it wouldn't it be wonderful if he'd just do some of the things he's already done, uh, things in the New Testament. I'd never forget, the Lord spoke to me one time, and he said, start moving in the things that have been done because I'm about to show you the things that have never been done. Hallelujah. How I many know he's the creator? He's the creator. And if he's the creator, he's still creating. He's still doing some things. I mean, it's not like, well, you know, he was really, he just, he was young in the Old Testament. That's why he was really outgoing. <laughs> New Testament, he still had, you know, still had something going. But now it's been so many years, and so he's just kind of not doing much. I think maybe it's us. Because we're talking about an eternal being. We're talking about Almighty God. We're talking about the one who is and was and will be. We're talking about the one who is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And he's doing creative things. He's doing some creative things in your life. He's about to make a way where there seems to be no way. He's about to do some things in your life that that only God can do. God's about to do a creative thing in your life. God's about to do some things where he just, well, I don't see it. Well, then he's about to create it. Well, you don't understand, Pastor. It's just not there. Well, God's about to create it. But it'll be by your faith. It'll be by your expectation. Forget what you've known. Forget what you've heard. God's about to do a new thing. Hallelujah. Now notice, it says, uh, now, everybody say now, it shall spring forth. There's about to be a shift. There's about to be a thing that, that it was going this way, and now it's going that way. It's going that way, not going that way. Come on. Glory to God. And then it says, uh, it'll spring forth. Shall you not know it? Shall you not know that I, I do new things? Shall you not know there's a season that's about to burst loose? Should you not know that the former rain and latter rain are coming together? Should you not know that I'm about to do great things? Yeah. He's God. I will even make a way in the wilderness. And rivers, rivers in the desert. That's a shift. That's like putting the Mississippi right down the Sahara. That's a bad. Do you know the Mississippi? Uh, the Indians called it the Holy Spirit River. And for years it was known as the Holy Spirit River. went right down the middle of America. It's time for the Holy Spirit to go right down the middle of America again. Hallelujah. It's time for revival. It's time for a mighty river. It's time for a flow of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> it's time to get in the flow. It's time to get in the river. It's time to get, you know, people say, well, the river was during the 90s. You know, we had the flow in the river, and boy, we were moving and blah, blah. No, 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 no. I, <clears throat> there, things come into a balance. Amen. But you don't throw away the river. You balance it out with the word. I mean, oh, <laughs> during the 90s, we got... We got a, we, you know, it's a pendulum. We got way over here to where it was all river, and there wasn't much, there wasn't much word. And then, and then some people went way back and just word. 
We got to have a balance of God where the word is producing, where the word is creating, where there's a power, a dunamis miracle working power that rises up from the word of God. You haven't seen anything yet. There's about to be rivers in the desert. Come on. There's about to be some things, hallelujah, from lack to sudden blessing, a shift. Every day, God is positioning you. Every day. Every day, God is positioning you in the blessing. You see, the blessing is on you if you're born again. Did you hear what I said? You're not hoping for the blessing. You're not begging God to be blessed. You're redeemed of the curse. That's why we say so. We say we're redeemed. We say we're redeemed from sickness. We say we're redeemed from the flu. We say we're redeemed from anything that man can make in a laboratory. We say that we are redeemed from poverty. We're redeemed from lack. We're redeemed from anything that, that is under the curse of Deuteronomy 28. And, it, and man, it, it's a lot of verses of a curse. But there's a lot of verses of the blessing. Amen. Every day, God is positioning you in being blessed. Somebody going to get that. Every day, God is positioning you to be blessed. Because the blessing is on you, in you, and moving through you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It's time for a full, full revelation. A full revelation of the blessing. It's time for a full, everybody say full, a full revelation of the blessing. That we would have a revelation that we're positioned with the blessing on us every day. Come on. Turn with me to First Chronicles and let's let's understand this. We're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get that revelation today. You are going to get that revelation today. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. First Chronicles and uh, chapter 5. Verse 1. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, or Jacob, Jacob's name was changed to Israel, uh, for he was the firstborn, uh, for as much as he uh, defiled his father's bed, uh, he slept with one of his concubines. Uh, his birthright was given to the sons of Joseph. His birthright, the blessing. Everybody say the blessing. Was given, uh, was given to the sons, the sons of Joseph. The son of Israel or Jacob. And the genealogy, the genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birthright. What happened was, Jacob had put his blessing, matter of fact, I, I, you need to read this, get, get, get a hold of this last part. Uh, verse 2, for Judah prevailed above his brethren, and of him came the chief ruler, but the birthright, right of the firstborn, the birthright was Joseph's. Now the first idea here, you got to understand something. <laughs> Jacob, Jacob loved Rachel. Isn't that right? 
How many know he ended up with Leah? Come on. Jacob had sons through Leah. But how many know when he finally got the wife he wanted, had to work for it, there was a shift. The blessing did not come on the firstborn over here of Leah's boys. It came on the firstborn of Rachel's. The firstborn was named Joseph. Well, how many know the older brothers were pretty jealous over that? We came first. Who are we? Chop liver? They wonder what's going on here. Why aren't we blessed? Why didn't we get the blessing? And the blessing came on Joseph. Now, Jacob, he's now blessing his grandsons. How many know sometimes you've got to do it differently because God's telling you what to do? And what you think in the natural mind is not supernatural. Jacob now is about to bless his grandsons, and he crosses his hands. How many know that cross represents the cross? Come on, somebody. But it represents more than that. It represents the shift. Sometimes there's a shift of blessing. You didn't think you were going to get blessed, but suddenly there's a shift. And the blessing comes on someone who was not the firstborn. He crossed his hands and blessed the second born. But God honored it. And the blessing came on Joseph. Now, Joseph knew that he was blessed. Joseph received the shift. Joseph received the blessing. He is blessed. And later his sons were blessed. Amen. Joseph, if you look at Joseph's life, you would say, well, that wasn't a very good life. Oh, yeah, it was. No matter what happened in his life, he was blessed. He ends up in a pit. But the pit became a palace. Well, the, yeah, I mean, it wasn't that quick. I mean, he went from the pit then, he, then he's over there with Potiphar. I mean, he's over there, you know, and, and now he's accused of things. Now he ends up in jail. How many know that jail is the best place if, you're, if you understand the blessing? Because now he was in position to go higher. He could have only gone as high as he was at the point he was. Never look at your situation as the worst place because God has put the blessing on you. It doesn't matter where you are or what's happened to you, the blessing's still on you. You're about to succeed. Well, you don't know what I went through in my childhood. Get over it. Well, that's easy for you to say. God's your father. And he was good to you. And he loves you. He cares about you. He loves you. And sometimes we spend all this time focused on the past. And God says, forget about the past. I'm about to do a new thing. I want to create something. I want to do something so wonderful, so glorious, because I put my blessing on you, and you're focused back on the curse. You're focused back on the junk. You're focused on stuff. It's time to let it go. And let God. And let God be big in your life. Well, you don't understand, Pastor. You don't understand. I want this to control my, my life and the rest of my life. No, you don't. And you would never say that. <laughs> but yet you're allowing it. You're allowing things of the past to control your future. 
If you keep staring at the rearview mirror, you're going to crash. There's going to be problem after problem. Yesterday, cover it with the blood. Do whatever you need to do in prayer. Do whatever you need to do to cover it, to forget it, to forgive people. And wash it away. And give yourself a destiny. You have a purpose in God. You have a purpose in this end time revival. You have a purpose. And the enemy will do everything he can to keep you down. He did everything he could to keep Joseph down. He became second in command in Egypt. Joseph became second in... How many know the blessing comes with dominion? The blessing comes with dominion. We're the kings. We're the lords. King of kings and lord of... Oh, yeah. We're kings. We decree the word of God. We speak the word of God. We believe the word of God. We're lords because we occupy and take land. Hallelujah. And we're blessed. The blessing is on you. No matter what is going on in your life, there's a shift to keep you going higher. Because the blessing's on you. There's a shift that happened over and over in Joseph's life because Joseph looked at every situation that it was a blessing. I've told these stories before, but... <laughs> I, I've lived this way. I don't know why. I, I Somehow it got in me. Probably the Holy Ghost. But if something bad happens to me, I always say, this is working together for my good. First thing's out of my mouth. I chipped my tooth. I said, it's working together for my good. And I looked in the mirror. It was straighter than it needed to be chipped. <laughs> Hallelujah. I fell on my face. I said, oh, no, I hurt my chin. I said, my cleft is going to be better. It's going to be deeper. <laughs> now, I, I'm this way. I don't look at a situation as bad. I look at it like Joseph. He just kept going up the ladder. He just kept going up higher. Why? Because the blessing was on him. Yes. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. And the blessing is on you. If you're born again, the blessing is on you. Notify your face everywhere you go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> I had a dream years ago that I was working for Kenneth Copeland. I was living in California at the time. And, and uh, it was vivid. One of those vivid dreams that come from God. It seemed real. I was walking there at the, at the headquarters. I was walking around. I was there so happy to be working for him. I woke up and I got sad about it because I thought to myself, well, I, I let that pass because I had lived out here in Texas. I had gone to Christ for the Nations and I, I, I was, went back to California for a short period of time. And... Uh, I thought, well, that, that season's over. I ended up, God told me, make a long story short, God told us to go to, back to Texas. How many know this is God's country? Come on, somebody. <laughs> and so uh, when I got back here, this guy comes up to me that I'd gone to college with, and he said, he said I'm now working for Brother Copeland. He said, you need a job? <laughs> I didn't even seek it out. He said, I, I'll, I'll arrange it. When I got to the campus, up the headquarters and all that, I'd never been there before. But it was in my dream. I'm saying, I've seen this before. I've seen that road before. I've seen this coming up over here. It doesn't matter if you think it can't be done. If God shows it to you, you're about to press into it. Hallelujah. 
Brother Copeland had me move his motorcycle one time. He's walking next to me, and, and I'm thinking, I'm going to drop this thing. It's heavy. I don't know how to do this. I'm not a motorcycle guy. And he looked over at me, and he goes, I'll take it. <laughs> he could see how I was sweating. <laughs> and I had some good times. I got home from a meeting. I was exhausted. I'd been flying out, running several days over here, jump on another plane, go somewhere else. Got home, I was exhausted. Got a phone call from somebody. They said, they said uh, we'd like you in this meeting. We've got a seat for you, reserved seat. And I said, I said, I don't think I can make it. I'm, I'm tired. And they said, well, we, we'll hold it for you. I got off the phone, and the Lord said, you're going. I said, Lord, I, I really don't. I talked to the Lord. I said, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. He said, you're going. Said, oh, yes, sir. I went to that meeting. After the meeting, several pastors and leaders went up to a, a room where they had all kinds of food for us and went, went up there. And this man comes up to me and he says, uh, introduced himself, and he said, I'd like you to come out and preach for me out in California. And, I, and if I hadn't been there, come on, somebody. But I knew that if I kept staying in the presence of God and obedient to the voice of God, I'm going to keep going higher. Yes. I went and spoke for that, that, that man a couple of years in a row. And then that guy actually replaced the Believers Convention out there and started the Victories Believers Convention. And it was with Jerry Savelle and, and Keith Moore and Creflo Dollar and Fred Price and all these guys and me. Now, how many know if I had stayed home and went to bed, I would have never met that guy. I never would have been in that position. But you're constantly moving towards something. And it doesn't matter if you know how to do it. I didn't know how to do it. I just knew how to obey. As I'm in those meetings, Fred Price loved me, asked me to come out, and his son asked me to come out and preach for him at the Faith Dome. Well, the first time I preached for the men's meeting, it wasn't as big of a deal. It was at a huge hotel resort in Palm Springs for a week. It was the JW Marriott. You see, there's Marriott's and then there's JW Marriott's. Those are the resorts. Somebody had to go. <laughs> then they had their 40th anniversary at the Faith Dome and they asked me to come back and preach it. Come on, somebody. They could have had anybody. Why? But I kept going towards, kept moving, kept believing, because the blessing's on me. The curse is not on me. The curse is not on you. Amen. It's a lie of the pit. Well, you know, it just seems like everything always goes wrong. Stop saying it. There's about to be a shift. You think you're going like this, and there's about to be a shift almost straight up. I remember years ago, I, I said, Lord, I'd like to be on TBN. And it uh, didn't seem like it, it was happening. I had been ordained at the time by Jerry Bernard. I'm now under Jerry Savelle. But at the time back then, I was under Jerry Bernard, who was second banana at TBN. It never dawned on me to give him a call. I gave him a call, and he said, oh, Jeff, yeah, we'll have you on. He said, you'll, you'll even prosper and be blessed with stuff on your jacket. Uh, <clears throat> he said... <laughs> He said, uh, yeah. I think it was like two weeks later I was on TBN there in California. Hallelujah. And was asked back several times. Glory to God. And then he ended up being the, the host of TBN uh, uh, for a couple years uh, there in Tulsa. And, and spoke, uh, you know, on Golden Eagle there, old Roberts uh, station. Uh, went on to speak... Uh, uh, Try uh, TCT, which is a big, big uh, television network. Le C, Lester Summerall's television network, uh, and uh, several others. God kept 
moving and doing because I have the blessing on me. I expect, when I don't see something moving, I expect it to begin to move. Something's about to move at Great Faith Church. Feel it. I know it. You're some of the greatest people. You're hungry. You know, everybody out there is not hungry. A lot of them just want a little, little message, you know, a 20-minute message on how they can um, unpack their problems. Give your suitcase to Jesus. Turn with me to Romans 15. Amen. Romans 15. Hallelujah. There's a lot of good churches out there too. Don't, don't get me wrong. But we've got, we've got some great people here that are hungry. Hungry. Hungry for the word. Hungry for Jesus. Hallelujah. And that's why you are about to pray in one of the greatest moves that people are going to talk about. Hallelujah. But don't despise small beginnings. Oh, no, no, no. When I started in the traveling ministry, I was, I was speaking at what, whoever would have me in. I spoke at some strange places. I spoke at one church where they said, well, we'll put you up. They put me up, and my family, we went as a family ministry. Uh, uh, they, my wife and my daughters would minister, you know, uh, children's revival, and I'd preach the revival to the, to the adults. Uh, I, I said, you know, where, where, where are you having us up? And they said, oh, we've got a pull-out couch in the lobby. <laughs> now, in my mind, I'm thinking, we have to wake up before they come in the front door. We better set two alarms. This is, this is really before cell phones. And you're hoping you're going to wake up before they start coming in. We're about to go fall asleep. It's it, it late because they keep you up, you know. And uh, we're about to fall asleep. And a train, which I believe came in the front door and went out the back door. I mean, we jumped up out of that sofa couch or sofa bed, whatever it was. It had metal bars all in it. All I know is the train filled the temple. Oh, come on, laugh. It's funny. Hallelujah. Those are spy small beginnings. Because God kept moving me higher and higher and higher. And God's about to move you higher and higher and higher because the blessing is on you. How many found Romans 15? Romans 15 verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in what you're hoping for, that you would abound, that you would accelerate the expectation of what you're believing for, that you would begin to be excited when you think in the natural things are going wrong. If you think Joseph didn't know things were going wrong, he knew things were going wrong. But Joseph, like no other, knew the blessing was on him. And he kept listening to God. That's why he always had a word for somebody. Hallelujah. He kept hearing the rhema of God. He kept hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Go down here to verse... Uh, 29. And I am sure, Paul said, I'm positive. I'm persuaded. 
that when I come to you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing. His expectation, everywhere Paul went, he, he went with an expectation of the fullness of the blessing of the good news of Christ, the anointed and his anointing. He was completely convinced. Everywhere he walked, everywhere he went, he believed he was going to come in the fullness of the blessing. I want you to understand this. The fullness of the blessing means absolutely no curse. That's what that means. Zero negative. Fullness means fullness. The fullness of the blessing is no curse. No Whatever looks like a curse, no matter what bad it looks like, it's working together for his good. Do you know even when Paul went to, <laughs> to jail, it gave him time to write this New Testament that you love? Amen. Whew. Sometimes we, we think that wherever we're at, it's the worst place it can be. And yet, there's a reason you're there. Because God's about to use you in that in a big way so that you can go to the next level. There's about to be a shift. If you stay positive, yes. Yes. if you have joy and peace in your believing, yes. you can get to the point where just a few verses past verse 13, you come to verse 29, and he's persuaded. he got joy and peace on him like never before. He is persuaded. I'm not going to have one drop of the curse. I'm not going to allow one negative thing to happen. I fully expect to come to you in the fullness of the blessing. The fullness of the blessing of Abraham. The fullness of every good thing that is Deuteronomy 28. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Whoo! In the fullness of time comes the fullness of God. Let me say that again. In the fullness of time comes the fullness of God. We're in the fullness of time. We're in that, that last hour. I don't know where we are in the 12th hour. We could be at 1258. I don't know where we're at in it. But I sure know we're at the end of this thing. We're in the fullness of time. The fullness of the days before the completion of this age. Yes. And we will go up to the marriage supper of the Lamb yes, at the end of this age. But at the fullness of time comes the fullness of of God. And the fullness of God will be creative. The fullness of God will be signs, wonders, miracles, souls being one everywhere. People, you'll be in Walmart, somebody crying out to get saved, hoping somebody will be there to speak them through. In the fullness of time will come the fullness of God. Because you've got to get persuaded like Paul. That everywhere you go, the blessing is on you, and you fully expect the fullness of the blessing. Hallelujah. There's a shift happening. There's a shift in thinking. There's a shift in believing. You've been believing here, God's about to bring you here. You've been believing it's negative, and yet God was saying, no, I'm going to use that to bring you higher. I'm going to use whatever situation you think is bad, I'm going to use it for my glory. I'm going to use it where you're in the right place at the right time. I thought I was in the wrong place. No, you're in the right place at the right time because the blessing is on you. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Psalm 24. Psalm 24. Hallelujah. The blessing's on you. <laughs> Psalm 24, verse 1. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness, if I say fullness, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Everything that is in this world belongs to God. 
and it's your inheritance. Everything in this world is your inheritance. Everything that is here is your inheritance. If you want it, you can have it. Matter of fact, we got our dominion back. We're in dominion. We have dominion. If you know you're in the blessing and the blessing has dominion, then you're going to have dominion like the second in charge of Egypt. How many know Pharaoh understood this? And he got to the point where he walked in the blessing to the point of dominion. Well, I don't, I don't know, Pastor. Uh, uh, can I have something that some other Christian wants? No. Well, you just said I could have whatever I want. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah I know you're out there. No, if some other Christian owns it or has it, if you want it at that point, it's coveting. No. But if the world has it, it doesn't belong to them. <laughs> There's about to be a shift. There's about to be a shift. There's about to be a wealth transfer. Come on, somebody. What's a wealth transfer? It goes from this group, who it didn't belong to, going over to this group. Well, you know, I've heard people say this. It was actually in a book. We're not to believe for the wealth transfer because it's coveting. How can it be coveting when it doesn't belong to them? And evidently, God encourages it. Because God, when they left Egypt, they took the wealth of Egypt with them. They just went up the doors and they said, can we have your jewelry? They said, yeah, take it. Just leave us alone. We don't want any more of those frogs. And they left with the wealth. Come on, somebody. They left with the wealth. Yes, they left with wealth. Hallelujah. Yes. That, was, that was one of the wealth transfers. How many of you know there's many wealth transfers in the Bible? Yes. Oh, yeah. Every time they took a spoil. Yes. How many know when they overtook the Philistines, they took the spoil? Oh, yeah. And on and on and on. So, I'm sorry. The earth and the fullness thereof, the fullness belongs to the Lord. And he can give it to whoever, whoever he wants. Yeah. And evidently, the word of God says, it's our inheritance. Hallelujah. There's about to be a shift that's going to go on. The shift's happening today. There's a shift happening right now. Well, it just seems like something bad's about to happen. Do you know people have that? Some, some people, that's the first thing they think of. Well, I, I heard, you know, uh, two people I knew died. You know, they go in threes. Well, you said it. How about enough in Jesus' name? They shall live and not die. How about we take control? How about we take dominion? How about we begin to be the sons and daughters of God? How many know the whole earth is groaning for sons and daughters of God? That we will finally know who we are and that the blessing is on us and everywhere we go, we're blessed. Well, that sure sounds like a bless me club. Is that what you are, Pastor, a bless me club? Yes! Because the alternative is a curse me club. There's no gray area. You're either blessed or you're cursed. Well, I just want to be a little blessed. That means you want to be a little, a little cursed. If you only want to be a little blessed, you, you want to be a little cursed. I know this is not something that, you know, you're probably preaching that prosperity stuff. What do you want me to do, preach poverty? Well, we should only have enough for ourselves. 
No, that's called greed. No, we should have so much we have something to give. Right. Amen. Amen. See, the traditions of men are contrary to the Word of God. Things sound right, but they're not word. They're not truth. God has put his blessing on you. The blessing, we lost it in Adam. We lost dominion in Adam. But we got it back through the last Adam, through Jesus Christ. And now we're walking in the blessing. And everywhere you go, you can expect, if it's bad, you can expect a shift. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Mm. You've been redeemed to dominion. You've been redeemed to the blessing. You've been redeemed of the curse. Just like Joseph, you are walking in dominion. No matter where you're at, you're going somewhere. Whatever happens to you, the blessing's on you. Amen? Amen. Turn with me over here to uh, John chapter 1. John. John chapter 1. And go down here to uh, verse 14. Hallelujah. And the Word, I mean, oh, that's Jesus. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Everybody say grace and truth. Whew. Full of grace and and truth. Hallelujah. John bore witness of him and cried, saying, This was he that whom I spoke. He that comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. <clears throat> he that comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Come on, somebody. And of his fullness, and of his fullness, and of his fullness, everybody say fullness. fullness, and of his fullness have all we received, and favor upon favor. Hallelujah. Grace upon grace. He's the word. He's the word that works. That word is getting in us. That word is changing us. It's letting us know the good news. Gospel means good news. Whatever is happening to you, it's good news. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some people, when they go to their mailbox, they, they say, oh, I don't even want to open it. It's a bunch of bills. How about you open it up and say, praise God, I got the money to pay these bills. Even if you don't have it yet, say it. Amen. God's about to put you into more than enough. Because we have received the fullness. We have received the fullness from, from grace to grace. From favor to favor. It's a gift. The blessing was bestowed upon you. The fullness of Him. The fullness, the fullness of grace and truth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. Jesus is one with His Word He's, because it's His will. He is the Word. And it's time to have the overflowing, the supernatural, nothing lacking, the abundance, yes. the fullness, the abundance. Everybody say abundance. abundance. The word Eden in the Hebrew means abundance. You can literally say the garden of abundance. Adam was placed in the garden of abundance. Man was always to walk in the blessing. First thing that God did was place blessing on Adam and Eve and give them dominion. We got it back. We've got to know it. 
We got it back through the blood of Jesus Christ. And now we're blessed. We're back to Eden. Come on, somebody. We're back as if Adam never sinned. We're back to being fully redeemed, fully blessed. I am persuaded that when I come to you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing. No curse. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Turn with me quickly to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. I used to have a clock right there, but they put a restroom in there now, so I'm going to keep preaching. Um, oh, I got one right here. Ephesians. How many give me five more minutes? Anybody? Give me five more minutes? Will you? If I raised hand, how many would give me five more minutes? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You're having too much fun. All right, so <laughs> Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, verse 11. Says, And he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. How many know you're all supposed to be a part of the ministry? You're being equipped. For the edifying of the body of Christ. So we all come in the unity, in the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. Now that word perfect man scares most people. Nah, I'm perfect. Not what it's saying. That word perfect in the Greek is the word complete. Complete. Till we all become complete. Till we all are walking in the fullness of the blessing. Till we all become word people, where we're all in him and he's in us, where we are in the word to the point where we're complete. Amen. Now, I, don't get me wrong, you'll never get to a point where you have all knowledge and all everything, and, and we're, always, we're always learning, and we'll be learning for a thousand years from now because God is so big and so wonderful and so glorious. But there's a completeness where we're finally walking in who we are Amen. and the authority of the believer in such a powerful way that we're bringing glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen? And so it says here in verse 13, till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge, everybody say knowledge. knowledge. The knowledge. You see, there's something about getting so much word that we, we become complete. The knowledge of the Son of God to a complete person, a complete man or woman, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ where we'll begin to walk like him, act like him, talk like him. You know how you talk like him? You just repeat his words. Amen. The word confession means to say the same thing. We just say what he said. That's why it's so easy to preach, because I'm just telling you what he said. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, God tells you his word. And in his word, there is hope. And in his word, there is truth. And in his word, there is vision. And in his word, there is destiny. I want to walk always shifting upward. Hallelujah. Always making that shift where I'm not believing for a little. I'm believing for the fullness. Come on, somebody. And the fullness of his presence and the fullness of his glory. If you spend time in the fullness of his presence and the fullness of his glory, everything else will be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom of God and all of what the king and his kingdom and his kingdom principles have. And everything is added to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The knowledge. The shift is coming. There's a shift coming right now. The whole earth's groaning for the shift. Hallelujah. 
I'm going to end in Ephesians chapter 3. Anybody get anything out of this this morning? Ephesians chapter 3. It, it, somebody might ask sometimes, well, you, you say that all the time. Did anybody get anything out of this today? I want to know if you're receiving. Yes. It, it means something to me because it, my heart's cries that you're getting it. Yes. Amen? Because yes. Yes. I, I don't study this stuff so that I can just heap it up to myself and I get more from me. No, I, I, I want to impart it to you, you so that you have a reason to have joy, a reason to expect something good out of the bad, to believe that you're walking and, and believing and fully persuaded in the fullness of the blessing. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. That God would grant you, say me, according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith by faith that you being rooted and grounded in God's love may be able to comprehend to measure out with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height and to know the love of Christ, to measure out the love that he has for you right now. See, if you understand he loves you, you'll understand there's about to be a shift. It might be negative, it might be bad, something you're going through might seem horrible, but he loves you. And there's about to be a shift. And there's about to be something grand, something wonderful, something glorious, something for the reason you were born. <sighs> to know the love of Christ which passes human knowledge. That you might be filled with all the fullness of God. You see, if you measure out his love, you can begin to move in the fullness of the blessing. See, if you know he loves you, well, you know, I've done some bad things. It's under the blood. I, I just believe if I do some good things this week, he'll, he'll change his mind about me. You're supposed to be doing good things because you have a new nature, not because you're trying to change God's mind. No, we're working the Word, and the Word begins to do the good things. See, the Word produces. If you're in the Word, you will produce good works. If you find yourself going the wrong way, jump and grab a Bible. <laughs> Open it up. Well, I was feeling tempted. Grab a Bible. You won't feel tempted. Well, I didn't feel like grabbing the Bible at that time. Duh. That's when you need to grab the Bible. You open up the Bible, you start reading. Find some scriptures on deliverance. Find some scriptures on how good God is. Yes. If you measure out the length, the breadth, the height, the depth, you measure out the love of Christ, the love that he has towards you. That knowledge, through the promises of God, that knowledge will cause you to walk in the fullness, read it, the fullness of God. You will walk in the fullness of the blessing, the fullness of God, the fullness of his glory, the fullness of everything he is. If you measure out how much he loves you, God loves you. And I love the next verse. It says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above anything you could ask or even think or even dream. Hallelujah. Say, I am persuaded that I walk in the fullness of the blessing. There's a shift coming. Every negative thing in my past, in my present, is over. There's a shift to, to greater things, to God things. I believe a shift is happening. What I couldn't believe before 
I'm believing. I'm fully blessed. I'm fully blessed. I've got, I'm, I'm full with God. I got, I'm, I'm, I'm overflowing. <laughs> glory to God. I said glory to God. Woo-hoo! Come on, somebody shout in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. The best is yet to come. Amen. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. The devil's a liar. Amen. That's a truth. God's word is truth. Amen. Believe the good report. Believe the blessing is on you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Anybody need to go?